What's going on traders? Welcome to the weekly Forex Outlook and Reviews in under 12 minutes so you can enjoy your weekend. Today we're going to be going over 10 pairs to see what's available for us in the markets moving into next week and hopefully get some clarity on some potential trading opportunities that you can take advantage of and hopefully get a great week like we've had this week. So the first pair that we're going to be taking at uh, a look at is a pound USD. And as you probably can see here, the overall center of the market has been pushing bearish for a very long period of time. Um, after the break of this previous structure, what we expect the market to do is continue to trade below 33.56 in order to see a continuation of this downtrend. And the current price action, as you can see here, has been rejecting this level. Now, I'm not too concerned or interested, shall I say, in selling at this level simply because of the traffic here to the left. I much prefer to see the market shift in momentum and and then break 3303 for a retest and then a continuation down. Now, the problem is, is if the market starts to push and break above 3356, we can then start to see that the market sentiment is changing and potentially this USD strength may deplete and pound strength may kick back into um, the markets here. But the thing is, what I'm looking at in terms of this break is not necessarily looking for buyers immediately. What I much prefer to see the market do is break above 3383 and even better still break above 3403 to see a new uptrend form, to see that the bulls have taken over the market and then look for some sort of retest continuations. But as of now, moving into next week, I'm focusing on sales in terms of looking or identifying USD strength. I'd like to see price trade below 3356. And if we do, then I'd like to see a break of this structure and a retest of 3303 for a continuation down. Now, the thing is, if the market starts to break above 3356, um, I will also look for potential sales at 3383 and or retest at 3403 for continuations down, because as far as I'm concerned, unless 3403 gets broken, we are still sell bias. Um, so that's my plans with pound USD. Next pair we'll take a look at is Euro USD. Now you can clearly see as well over here that the trend is still down. Dollar is still showing signs of strength here. And we have come back to an important level in the market around 1313, where price has previously broken the structural low. We've created a retest of this structure and we're now respecting it. The problem is with market open is we could have a gap up that would then potentially indicate a bullish sentiment in the market. So I'm going to be watching the level here around 1384 for a potential retest and a continuation down. And better still, what I'd like to see in the market is a shift in momentum and then a retest of the structure to create evidence and confirmation of bearish sentiment. Bears holding the structure around 1313 and then looking for those bearish close, bearish continuations back down to 1196 or 1190. Yeah, 1196. Now, if that doesn't happen, obviously, I'm going to just be looking for a simple break of this level and then a retest. So just to draw this in with the market sentiment indicating dollar strength, I want to see a break of this structure and a retest and a continuation down or from an intraday perspective, a break of a low and then a retest continuation down indicating a potentially new downtrend back down to 1196 and or I'm just looking for a break of this structure and a retest and then a continuation back to the downside with Euro USD. The next pair that we'll take a look at is Aussie dollar JPY. Now with Aussie dollar JPY and all the yen pairs, it's a little bit difficult to try and get uh, key levels to work with because of the strong push phases indicated um, this week or the week just gone with yen strength. So I think I'd look for a 50% retracement around 81.79. This is the area where I believe price can pull back to um, just pay, uh, based on past experiences here. What we have is high time frame candle closing bearish. And then the retest back at 50% level is simply just the candle pulling back to create the wick before a continuation back down to 8057. Now, because this is not a significant level, it's just an area where price could find or create the wick rejection. I'm still um, going to be looking for sales back at 8239. So I wouldn't see this market as turning bullish. I'll just see the fact, uh, the fact that the market is potentially having a deeper pullback to a major key level. So with that being said, if the market does start to break above some of these 50% retracements, I'll scale down to my intraday timeframes to see if there's new uptrends that have been formed. If there are retest levels to look around 81.79, and then I could use the range back up to 82.39 for buys. And then eventually, if given the evidence, look for sales all the way back down to um, 80.57. CAD JPY is the same thing here. We have a very strong push to the downside. And of course, we're going to want to see price come back to a 50% level in the market before continuation back down to 88.47. And this is a key level where price previously broke. So we do expect price to respect that around 90.02. If it doesn't, then of course, I'll be patient to wait for price to create at least a pullback 
so that I can identify the low here at 88.47 as the new structural low and then look for that break of that structure and a retest from an intraday perspective to look for continuation sales. Now, the reason why I've marked out 90, uh, 61 and 91.22 simply because if price starts to break above these levels, then I will anticipate price to continue bullish back up to some of these levels here, as you can see to the left, which is a reaction levels and or some of these highs. For buying opportunities, unless a clear trend forms on the way up, I'm not really looking to take buyers after the, until price is broken 91.22. Now, let me just make this very clear. The yen is very strong. There's no signs to indicate any weakness and it is actually dominating the market at the moment. So just be wary of that. Sales at 90.02 is the best plan on this uh, structure or a break of 88.47 if given the evidence that price can pull back to create a pullback lower high, not necessarily a retest, just a pullback lower high before then potentially continuing bearish to the downside. Next pair we take a look at is USD Swiss franc. So since last week, we had this really nice movement to the upside. Um, as you can see, the trend was creating higher highs and higher lows. We have a level here in the market where price has failed to break. And then we had a previous level here in the market where the higher low was formed. It was not respected. We've had this sharp movement to the downside and we started taking up previous lows. The market structure here clearly represents a bearish structure. So it would be uh, unwise to look for anything else other than sales. And personally, what I'm looking for with this market structure is for price to pull back to 80, uh, sorry, 9304 for a continuation back to the downside. And if we get that pullback, then I'll be looking for my indecision candles, quick rejections and or bearish momentum candles. And of course, if we don't pull back to these levels, for whatever reason, then the safest plan of action is just to look for a break of the structure, a retest and a continuation below 9190. This is intermediate levels for me where I'm not looking to trade at all unless price comes back to key levels or we start breaking key levels and then looking for those retests. So that's my analysis with USD Swiss franc. Next pair we'll take a look at is USDJPY. So if you trade both pairs, make sure you're looking at both of them for confluence. We can see they're almost identical structures here. And with USDJPY, I will also be looking for sales in line with yen strength and the confluence we see from USD Swiss franc. And I'd like to see price pull back to around 113.78 for a continuation back down to 113.05. If the market doesn't pull back to these levels, then I'm not looking to sell below 113.05. I much prefer price to take out the major structural low look for that retest of 112.76 and then a continuation. Now, the reason why I have this level here at 114.23 is because if price starts to break above it, I don't see this as buy-by structure as of yet. I still would be happy to look for sales at the 50% retracement level, as you can see here, which is a reaction level to the left. And then I can sell it back down to 113.78 and or look for a continuation all the way back down to some of these structural lows here moving into the middle of the week. Next pair we'll take a look at is New Zealand dollar JPY. Again, signs of yen strength. This structure is not the easiest to work with simply because of the strong push phase. So the only plan of action that I have with New Zealand dollar JPY is to see price pull back to around 78.25 for a continuation back down to 77.10. If the market doesn't pull back to some of these key levels to work off of, then I'm just going to look for a lower high to be formed. Once we have that lower high, I'm just going to be looking for the shift in momentum below 77.10 and then look for some sort of retest and a continuation back to the downside. Other than that, I'm not working with anything else with New Zealand dollar JPY, simply because the structure is very overextended and I do want to see a pullback. But if we get a sentiment across the market with yen strength, this will be a great plan of action. Next pair we'll take a look at is USD CAD. We can clearly see the trend of the market is still to the upside. Um, I'm not sure that we're getting so much so of dollar strength, but we are indicate uh, we can see uh, across the board that the CAD is weak. So with this, clean structure to the upside, breaking the highs, creating nice higher highs and higher lows. I'd really like to see a retest of 2740, then a continuation up. And it's just very, a uh, very simple plan. Of course, as long as price trades above some of these structural levels here in the market, we're still in an uptrend. So even a break below 2740 wouldn't necessarily mean sales. It just might mean we're having a deeper pullback before a continuation higher. Of course, this is early analysis before the market's open and anything can change. So just make sure you're being wary. But the whole reason we're making a plan is so that we can stick to the plan. If the plan doesn't play out, then guess what? We just don't take trades. Next pair we'll take a look at is pound JPY. We can see with the sentiment of the market indicating to us potentially pound weakness. Um, what we'd like to see is a nice pullback to around 152.64 for a retest and a continuation. 
This is a previous level in the market where price broke with that yen strength this week. And uh, this is reaction level. If it was going to be respected, we would have had a bounce. But we've had a violation, which means that if price comes back here again, we should get a reaction from the bears and see this market back down to 150.73. Now, if the market doesn't pull back to 152.64, I'm simply then just going to look for a break of the structure and a retest of the structure for a continuation back to the downside. Looking for those simple break and retests. And also what you need to be identifying is a continuation of that pound weakness and yen strength across the board. The final pair we'll take a look at is gold. As you can clearly see, the market has made a really nice movement to the downside. We had this break of this structure that we anticipated last week, and we've had this very strong movement. Now, what I'd like to see moving into next week is price trading below 1813. Um, in order to continue to identify this dollar strength, we can identify that the bears are still in the market in line with this bearish behavior. What I'd like to see as a simple plan of action is a really nice break of the structure, a retest of the structure, and then a continuation back down to around 1762. If we can do that, it means we correct this whole move and it'll be a really nice way to um, end November, seeing price continuing bearish down to 1762. Make sure you get that break of 1784 and a close. Be patient, wait for those retests, and then look for those continuations. So that's my analysis for the week. Of course, this is of my own opinion. This is not signals. And I always recommend every single day when you go to the charts, you clear them, you reanalyze the charts, you make a plan. And if that plan plays out, then you execute your trades. But I do hope that you thoroughly enjoyed this analysis. And if you did, give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new to the channel, turn on notifications. And of course, I really do wish you have an epic week. And as I always say, continue to trust the process.